You are listening to the Finding Careers and Podcast. I'm Pete Newsom. I'm with Ricky Baez today on a beautiful Friday morning. Ricky, how are you? Yes, it is beautiful. The sun finally came out, not like 20 minutes ago. Man, you have your out. radio voice going this morning. I do. I do, because uh, I think we've done this a lot today. <laughs> we have, we've got practice. Okay. You know, anyone listening is not supposed to know we've had two false starts this morning. <laughs> I will say that they are completely my fault. And yeah. uh yeah, so no, that's all right. It happens. We're human beings, Pete. We're it happens. Beings. And what a what a perfect segue into our theme today that not everything works out as you as you would like for it to. And yep. uh, that is true um, in podcast recording, as is true <laughs> in the job search process. So did did boy, it's almost like it it um, you know fate was on our side with us. It flowed. It flowed. It's like you know what? Let's show them exactly what this is all about. Yeah, Pete, we always talk about how we help people, helping people in in finding that job, how to how to engage with recruiters, how to engage with organizations. And for the longest time, I think people focused on little segments of the entire process where you and I are taking a look at the entire picture and kind of being the GPS of a candidate. So we talked about how to interview, how to prep for the interview. What do you do after the interview if you got the job? But what happens if you don't get the job? Yeah, and and it's something that is a is a, is a major part of um of what people do experience on both sides, the interviewer and the interviewee. But rarely do um do, does a manager hire uh, interview only one candidate for a role. You know, it happens, mm -hmm. but I, I my experience is that most of the time, more than mm -hmm. one candidate is interviewed. That means there's there's going to be someone losing um, out on on mm -hmm. that job um, and the decision not going in their favor most of the time. So how you handle that is 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 a reality that uh, most people have to face. I've had to face it. Uh, uh, have you? Oh, definitely, definitely. I here's so I'm about to tell you what what a hiring authority feels like when they make an offer. Because what I do, I always call the person who got the offer, to, who we want to offer, to make sure they accept it before we call the other two fi uh, finalists. So once they accept, I call the other two finalists, and when they're really nice, like really, really cordial and nice, I feel bad that I didn't offer them the job. Right now, that's my emotion, right? Because I'm like, oh man, I can't believe I'm hurting this person's feeling. But I feel bad about it, and that's what I tell people: how you treat the relationship with the recruiter after you don't get the job, you're supposed to make the recruiter feel bad. That's how good of a job you're supposed to do afterwards. Make them feel bad, not in a bad way, right? But you know, make them feel, make that conversation so memorable that when it happens, when another position comes up again, they'll know to remember you and just go out to you instead of you applying over again. And that's such an important uh thing to acknowledge and, and it's hard in the moment if especially if it's a job that you wanted you're, you're mm -hmm. disappointed you um you know some people get angry um yep. you know and and that's that happens too but i could tell story after story after story of candidates who weren't initially selected for a role uh but ended up having a different opportunity come their yeah. way as a result of that interview um, maybe a different job within the same organization, maybe the same job if the initial candidate doesn't work out or um, the, the, the role expands and there's more people that can be hired. I mean, there, are, I mean, being in staffing, I have dozens and dozens of stories about that. So just because in, um, in the moment it didn't go your way, you didn't get the answer that you wanted yeah. and hoped for um, how you act from that moment forward can often dictate you know whether something good comes your way or right. or door is closed forever and it's a round world and being in staffing you know, it, like i am anyone who's in staffing knows it is a round world and and you, yeah, you have to always kind of think ahead a little bit <laughs> depends who you ask right <laughs> well okay, okay. <laughs> so that's another episode yeah no, yeah so it, it's uh it, it's how you said it best how you treat that relationship app or afterwards will open or shut doors for you. So this is why I've got three tips here, Pete, that is that are going to help people as soon as you're done interviewing and you saying you thank, you know, we, we talked about what's better, whether it's an email or whether it's a, uh, a person uh, in a handwritten note. But when they call you to let you know, you did not get the job. You're let me tell you this. 
you you're not wrong in feeling hurt. All those feelings are valid. You just can't act on them. Right. So you are a human being. You 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 are going to get disappointed. You just can't act on them. So when they call you to let you know, please understand a decision has already been made. So whatever urge you have to try to convince them otherwise and how to answer something different or give more information, that time has passed to not waste any time on that. Thank them for the opportunity. That's the first one. Thank them for the opportunity. Um, acknowledge how much time it took to put this together. Uh, you know, just thank them for the time. Be really cordial with it. What do you think about that? Yeah, that, I think that I think one. that's a good, uh, really good advice. And it's it's when you're disappointed, and even you know, th there's a it's at times I think uh, a candidate who's interviewing sees the company is making the decision, and and yes, there's mm -hmm. a company, but there are individuals behind those decisions and they're not easy. I mean, I, I, this is a very general statement I'm going to make, but, but if, if I, there's almost two categories of um, interviews that, that happen when, when the, when someone's not selected, it's because it, there was a better candidate for, mm -hmm. for whatever criteria is being applied, either skill set, um, experience, um, interpersonal skills, you know, the, the, those criteria vary greatly from job to job and situation to situation. But there's a better candidate. And, and when that happens, there's emotion uh, involved with the interviewers as well, or uh, who, who will say, yeah, gosh, I really like this person. I mean, as a, as a you know, being in recruiting, we get those calls where uh, the manager wishes they, they didn't have to deliver that news. Yeah. And yeah. Um, that's real. Those, those feelings are real. So even though you're disappointed, um, you know, know that that happens a lot. Now, the other part is when it, when the candidate is just not a good fit for the role at all. Uh, maybe the 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 personality wasn't a good fit, and that the, there's no there was no emotional connection made. That does happen a lot too. Yep. Usually, both sides know when that happens. Yeah, um, that's true. <laughs> and the candidate senses it through the interview process. But the hard ones and the ones we're really talking about now, I think, are the ones where um, you know, there 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 really is. Uh, a disappointment on on the um, on the manager side as well, who's doing the interviewing. And I know the can't the, you know doesn't care about it in the moment. To your point, look past the moment. Mm -hmm. Thank them for their time, and, and even if even if you don't want to, um, you you should. And that's that's a reality of life at times where uh, you know I don't want to do this. I don't feel like doing this. I'm yeah. I'm angry. I'm upset. Yes, you rightfully so. But you know bite your tongue and mm -hmm. and say it anyway because it it will serve you better long term that's right no you're right it definitely will and again it's one of those just those those human traits that you just have to control your logic has to take over because it's going to be it's going to be a gut punch right yeah. so no go ahead no i mean i think the same thing applies i mean this is just a, a little bit of a side note but when um when you're terminated uh, you know, if yep. you were terminated as well, that's when there's feelings of anger and, and frustration and disappointment. And there's a, a, a desire at times to, to lash out at, um, at the, at your former employer, what is now becoming your former employer. But even then just, just know, and I know we've talked about this a lot there. It's, it's a part of business. It, it's a necessary mm -hmm. part. Of, it's a bad part of business, but just, just like death is a part of life. It, it, yeah. it's, a, it, it happens. Companies, uh, when they're not having financial success, when they need to downsize, they will have to make hard decisions. But again, it, it, my experience as a recruiter, often being in the middle of these decisions, mm -hmm. right? We're not, we're not making it, but sometimes we're often having to communicate it. I can tell you that no one's happy on either side, you know, <laughs> no, and, and, and a lot of times even worse, the managers who are having to make these decisions, they may be getting that call next. Yeah. And that's right. so, you know, just, just remember in the moment that, um, that, that, that you know, there is a tomorrow in this and, and, and it's, and it's hard to do, but that's why we're talking about it because we do want that, um, you know, on everyone's mind, if they're faced with that disappointing news. Yeah, and 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 that and that should be another episode. What to do when you get sep involuntary separated? How do you handle that? So you just gave me a great idea for another episode, uh, for uh, for Zengate. But yeah, it, it's it's you've got to be able to cultivate that relationship going forward, and this is how you start it. So you thank them for the opportunity. That's the first one. The second one, it's gonna take a lot for somebody to take this in. 
ask for feedback. Absolutely. Ask for feedback and do not get upset with the feedback they give you. Do not rebut it. Just take the feedback, understand what they saw. Because remember, just because you put out this communication, it doesn't mean that's what they saw, right? You want to acknowledge what they saw, how you came across. That way you are aware for the next one. So if you ask for feedback, that's going to send the message like, oh, man, okay, this person wants to improve. They're saying all the right things. Again, you're trying to make them feel bad about the decisions they made. Yeah, I say that jokingly, but you know, it, it, it's, it's, it, it does work. Yeah. You, know, you have to continue to draw on uh, my experiences in recruiting. We will, uh, when we present a candidate for consideration, we assume uh, we don't assume, but based on the, <laughs> that's the wrong way to phrase it. All of we, we expect that that candidate will be interviewed Mm -hmm. Uh, based on all the communication we had up until that point of our understanding of the of the hiring need and our assessment of the candidate who we're presenting, that doesn't happen 100% of the time. Sometimes candidates would be declined in that stage. We insist on feedback in order to present another candidate because we've invested, as the recruiters, we've invested time and effort um, in understanding the role, qualifying it on the front end, mm -hmm. working with a candidate. And for us to present a candidate, we've we've asked a lot of them to get to that point. Mm. And so uh, there's a lot of time invested on, on both sides. So if we're um, not able to get solid uh, and thorough feedback, we're not willing to continue to work on the role because we clearly thought that the candidate we initially presented was the right fit. And if we're being told that they're not, then there's a breakdown in the communication somewhere. Something's wrong. Yep. And there's no reason for us to continue down the path that we were already on. So the the feedback is a huge thing in the world of, of staffing and hiring and interviewing. And so you have that opportunity to ask for it and, and absorb it. Again, not in the moment necessarily. It may, it may mm -hmm. lack meaning. It, it, you may not be able to appreciate the feedback, but get it anyway. Uh, mm -hmm. Because you, you, it's going to be really hard to go back after the fact and and um, obtain it. Now I'm going to go even further, and since you brought it up, and say, ask for the feedback at the end of the interview, uh, initially. So Ooh. in the way I recommend phrasing that is say, have I, have I shared everything that I can um, to lead you to believe that I'm the ca right candidate for this job? And if not, please let me know. Um, now I'm a fan of putting people on the spot while you can, <laughs> because yeah. addressing it after the fact is different in right. um, having the opportunity to address it in the moment or another way to phrase it is, is there any reason um, uh, for, uh, do you have any doubt that I'm the right candidate for the job? If so, why? Right. Now, what, what's your take on that? I mean, that puts people on the spot in, uh, in, in, in but I think you know, candidates have that, um, you know, it, every interview, should have an opportunity to for the candidates to ask questions. Yeah, and I'm I'm just a big um, you know, believer that uh, you, know, you you need to strike while the iron's hot. So okay, we did not talk about this before the show, so this is a surprise for me. Um, should you ask? You know what? Here's why. Now this is for me. This is not advice for anybody. This is how I would take it. That would that would mess me up. Because if I ask that question, have I conveyed everything that will make you feel that I'm the best candidate? If they're like, well, we have some more questions, that automatically tells me I was not in the top spot. That automatically tells me. And then I'm going to have to, I'm going to feel like I'm going to have to keep just giving more examples because now I know that I didn't do well. Well, then, but that's, that's the whole point. Right. It, it, you know, and, and bad news early is good news. I'm a big believer in that. I, it's a phrase I repeat often mm -hmm. because um, the sooner you know that the, the news is potentially bad, the sooner you can do something about it. And, yep. uh, you know, in this case, you could potentially turn out around the scenario. I mean, what what if right? there was something that um, you know, when when people interview at times they're uh, and this is just natural, right? They're they they get nervous and they they may forget something obvious. I mean, I've seen people practically forget their names, you know, in an interview. Yeah. Um, and and that's that's common. And so if 
it, we see things missed that that are that are obvious and that people really know well. Um, just because in the moment that you know it slipped their mind, that may be an opportunity to correct it. You know, and, and let's say you ask me that you know that question if I'm interviewing you and I say, well, Ricky, yeah, I mean, if I'm being honest, you you didn't display you know, X, Y, Z that we, that we think is very important for the role. Now it's going to put the interviewer on the spot and a lot of people aren't going to know what to say, mm -hmm. but so be it. I mean, get, you know, take your shot, right. While you, while you can. Um, but in that scenario, if I, if I say, here's why, and you, and you go, Oh man, shame on me for not um, you know, telling true. you this. I have, yeah. you know, lots of experience doing X, Y, Z. Here's my, here's where, when I've done it successfully, whatever that situation is, or, yeah, you're right. And if you're not going to get the job, if you're the candidate, wouldn't you rather know sooner than later? That's you know, if true. you can, wouldn't you yeah. rather know then and, and say, yep, I, I get it, you know, that you're right. And I, because if it's after the fact, it's too late. Hey, we've already hired someone else. And you say, oh man, the feedback, it was that I, they said, I didn't know X, Y, Z, but I do. And I just, it slipped my mind at the time, or the question wasn't presented in a way I, I knew what they were asking. But if you can correct it in the interview scenario, you may you may end up on the on the right side of the of the equation at the end. I'm changing my tune on that. Cause, so, OK, so now I know. Awesome. So I'll know either I did well or I'm going to Applebee's for the two for one so I could cry my sorrows away afterwards. <laughs> so we'll see. Yes. Yeah. I mean, Why it's Applebee's? it's. You, I believe strongly in in open communication in an interview yeah. process on both sides, because it's not, it should never just be about a employer deciding whether the candidate's a good fit. The candidate is also assessing the, the employer in the situation, deciding mm, if, right. if, if, you know, it's a good fit on the other side. So yeah, it's natural that candidates should ask questions. And we, we highly encourage any candidate that we work with at four corner resources, our staffing company to, um, go in prepared to ask questions and, and also take notes you know, during the interview of questions that you want to ask that mm -hmm. you, um, you know, maybe things that you heard that you weren't expecting or, or, you know, or surprise that comes up along the way. Awesome. So a little bit off okay. topic, but, but it's, no, but we, it's all part of the same, uh, the yeah. same thing, which the more feedback you get, the better and the sooner you get it, the better that that's the part that I wanted to, uh, to impart. So we thank them for the opportunity. We ask for feedback. Now, normally this is where it ends, right? So this is where I tell people go above and beyond. Just because you no longer need to communicate with this recruiter, it doesn't necessarily mean the communication needs to stop. You have an amazing, valuable, tangible asset, and that's called the recruiter's email address. You no longer have to guess on LinkedIn who's recruiting for what and who's working on what and what region. You continue that relationship with that recruiter. If you build a relationship with that recruiter, like, for example, what are their favorite books? Because, you know, sometimes you chit chat and you get to know them as a person. And if you find an article that you think will resonate with that recruiter, you have to have talked about it before. Send it to that person. Ask them to go to coffee. Network. This is the part when you build that relationship, when you don't have to build that relationship, according to everybody else. Then in two, three months down the road, if another similar position comes up or another position comes up that shares your skill set, because you're going to be on the top of the recruiter's mind because you're in their inbox. You're building a relationship. You just went out to Applebee's to cry about that position you didn't have. Right. So you build that relationship with them. So you continue to build it going forward. And then they're going to be tapping you on the shoulder when a position comes up. Trust me, it works. Um, the, the one thing I would want to interject there, because we see this mistake made is, is don't be. Um, uh, don't be. Overly persistent in staying in touch with someone, let some time. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, and I would even we should you know, say that. Yeah. Yeah. Let, let some time pass a minimum of a month, maybe more, yeah. probably more. Uh, but I would recommend if you're going to stay in touch with the recruiter, at, you know, put, put that out there up front. Hey, can yeah. I, can I reach out to you every, every few months in case something changes and you know, at least let 30 days pass. That's a good point. Don't come, you know, don't, don't, don't stalk them. Don't show up at their house at midnight in the bushes. That's not going to be good. I mean, you're going to get an interview, but it's not going to be with the organization. It's going to be with the local police department. Yeah, And, <laughs> so and just that. know that, 
it, nearly everyone who, it, it, unless they've just been extremely lucky, um, are are just unique in in their skill set or who they are as a candidate or haven't interviewed very much. Um, almost everyone experiences it at some point. Yeah. You know, I, I had a I had a two minute interview once that uh, you know the person <laughs> asked me about my experience and something I had no experience in. And, and as soon as the question was asked, I, I was thinking, did you not look at my I mean, this was a long time ago. Did you not look at my resume? Um, and the person hadn't clearly had not looked at my resume and, and it was, it was just a very brief interview. And um, I was disappointed because it was a, 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 a it, it would have been, a, it was a big improvement of the situation that I, I was in at the time. And, um, I was, I was looking forward to it. I was excited. I told my wife about I'm like, this is two minutes. This is great. It was, I was looking forward to it for days. In fact, and then, um, the bubble was burst immediately. And, uh, and, and yeah, the thought of doubling my income, which I was already spending the money in my head disappeared. Oh. And it was awful. And if, and, you pulled and, the uh, Griswold. and, you know, th those kind of bad experiences have helped guide me in, in how we treat in, in yeah. candidates because, you know, it's also easily avoidable. But just know yeah. that, you know, those situations are common. The disappointment, like you said, is is real. And, and you know, we're not here to suggest otherwise, but we are here to say that you want to live to fight another day. That's right. And um, know that, that it, you know, if it wasn't a good fit, it's probably for a better reason, better to, you know, when I say bad news early is good news. That's also in the interview process um, right. of whether if, if the organization has decided it's not a good fit, believe them. <laughs> you, know, <in> <laughs> you got that right. <laughs> you know, you don't want to, you don't want to go into a bad scenario. So um, great advice uh, all, mm -hmm. all across the board, Ricky. Uh, and I, I, I agree with that. And, you know, from your perspective as HR, my perspective in as, as um, you know, being a, the middleman, so to speak, as as a professional recruiting firm, um, we we could tell you that how you handle that scenario will often dictate what comes next and maintain those relationships. Don't don't burn them down just because right. uh, you're you're unhappy in the moment. Too many people are doing that these days, and they're videotaping them on TikTok and everything. So you are 100 percent right. Don't burn relation. Don't burn bridges. Take take every every failure as an opportunity to learn and just make sure you got the nicely paved road going forward. Trust me, it's going to pay dividends folks. Even, even though you, you, you dis, uh, disputed that it's a round world and you suggested it be <laughs> flat. Is that. Hey, I'm open for evidence. <laughs> I'm open for evidence. <laughs> That's awesome. Well, what comes around goes around. How's that? Um, or I think that's for some people. <laughs> so, so good. Well, look, this is a, it's a, it's not a fun subject, but it's important and necessary Great. subject. So um, thank you for listening today. This is a short episode because um, this is a, let, let's, let's hope this happens with, um, you yeah, with not, you know, not often to, to anyone who's listening, but just know that it, 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 you know, it's common and you're not alone. And um, right. if you have any further questions about it, please, you know, reach out to us. We, we would love uh, to hear from you. Um, and so, uh, they, but thank you for listening. That's, um, that's as much as I have today. That's right, folks. Thank you very much. Drive safe. And remember, please like us, share us, look us up on your favorite pa uh, podcast platform. Give us a like, give us a share and let us know what you want to hear coming up. We would really awesome. appreciate it. Awesome. Ricky, thank you so much. And uh, thank you, sir. everyone drive safe and have a great rest of your day. Have a good one. Bye.